Hi, my name is Dr. Ed Uthman. Um, just thought I would take a few minutes here during my coffee break and uh, chat a little bit about the COVID vaccines. Uh, and I'm going to aim these remarks at my um, compatriots in the healthcare field. Uh, not so much doctors because it's kind of preaching to the choir, but all my other coworkers throughout the hospital uh, in various uh, roles. Uh, it turns out that the COVID vaccines have been highly accepted by doctors and at least 95% of practicing physicians have already been vaccinated. But the acceptance rate by other personnel in the same business, which is taking care of sick people, has not been anywhere near that good. And so clearly there's some concerns that uh, we need to address, and that's what I'd like to do. First of all, um, those of you who work with me, you know where I am and I'm easy to find. If you ever want to talk about the vaccines or anything to do with COVID, just drop by and see me. Uh, the rest of you that are watching on YouTube, just put your concerns in the comments section and I'll try to address them. So there are quite a few myths going around about the vaccine. Um, I think one flaw in the logic that I'm seeing is that people look at the risk of the vaccine versus no vaccine. And that's really a false dilemma. It's really, the question is the risk of the vaccine versus the risk of getting COVID. So the COVID virus is highly contagious. You will be um, exposed to it. You will be, it will make an attempt to infect you unless you completely isolate yourself from all of human society and, and never have any contact with anyone. So the choice is not between the vaccine and nothing, it's between the vaccine and COVID. So basically what the vaccine does is it uses one of two means to deliver a small amount of genetic material that was taken from the COVID virus. And that genetic material is capable of only one thing, and that's making a specific protein that the virus makes when it infects you. And then once that protein is exposed to your immune system, your immune system reacts to that, develops antibodies and cell-mediated cell -mediated immunity against it. And that gives you a good degree of protection from infection by the actual virus when it shows up. So your choice is to have one small bit of viral DNA that codes for one protein that itself cannot do you any harm. That's your one choice. Your other choice is getting that protein that the vaccine makes and all the other proteins that the virus makes and the fact that the viruses, unlike the vaccine, are capable of replicating inside your body and destroying your cells, producing an illness of varying severity, which can then go on and infect your patients and your coworkers and your family members and all your contacts. So that's your choice. So there's no choice that involves not being exposed to the viral RNA, the viral genetic material. That's gonna happen one way or another. So do you want a good exposure or a bad exposure? So here's a myth that I've heard, unfortunately, even from doctors, and even one pathologist was, was telling me this, and it's unfortunately, it's completely wrong because it's very misleading. So the narrative is, sure, the vaccine keeps you from getting sick or dying or being sick enough to go into the hospital, but it doesn't keep you from getting infected. So instead of getting infected and getting sick and going to the hospital where you're put on isolation and, and personnel are protected from you, you go about your daily life infecting everyone around you. So again, this is a false dichotomy because the vaccine, and unfortunately, this is something that hasn't been publicized very well, the vaccine does markedly de decrease the incidence of being infected in the first place. Don't hear about that very much, but that is one of the properties of the vaccine. And there was a study recently released by the Texas uh, Department of Health and Human Services. And um, 
it showed that the vaccine reduces the incidence of being infected in the first place by a factor of 13. So you're 13 times more likely to get infected without the vaccine than if you have the vaccine. So think of that as a choice. Uh, here's another objection I've heard. Um, the vaccine has, has come out too fast. It hasn't taken a, enough time in, during development. So my, my, I would just answer that question with the question, how long would you be comfortable with? Another year, another five years? How about 40 years? It's taken 40 years to not yet come up with a vaccine for AIDS. We'd love to have that, but that's a tough, that's a tough nut to crack. So no matter, no matter how much time and effort's been spent on that, we have not been successful <clears throat> in developing that vaccine. Fortunately, the coronavirus, it's a lot easier to make a vaccine to it. So they were able to do it within a few months with the expanded resources that the pharmaceutical companies have with so much money being thrown into the effort, they can hire as many people they want and buy as much uh, supplies and equipment as they want. And sure enough, they put together some very effective vaccines um, that work on a principle that was already well known, the uh, use of um, viral RNA and giving that to the host and having the host react to that produce uh, immune reaction to it. So to me, producing it fast, that's a feature, not a bug. It, it was produced fast because it was relatively easy to do it with the resources that they had. And again, I come back to you, how long would it take? Would, would you be happy if you waited five years? Just let them sit there and twiddle their thumbs for five years and then ship out the vaccine and then you'd be happy with it? So I don't really understand the reasoning about this. Um, here's another thing that, um, that I've noticed, the people that know most about virology and immunology, in other words, people that have actually studied this for a living um, as undergraduates or as gra graduate students and people with PhDs and master's degrees, they seem to be the least concerned about the negative effects of the vaccine. It's the people with the most knowledge are the ones that are most accepting of it. And the people that are rejecting it are the ones, honestly, have never taken a course in virology or immunology. And it, at some point, you have to honor expertise, don't you? Um, so I've been in practice for 40 years. The first five of those were in uh, academic medicine. So that involves a lot of writing papers and serving on consensus panels and things like that. And one of the first things you notice is that uh, medical scientists, like all human beings, have a combination of competitiveness and uh, cooperativeness. They cooperate with each other, but they also compete with each other. And when you see how um, avidly they do compete with each other, the notion that they could ever be involved in any type of large-scale conspiracy is, uh, is honestly, it's laughable there's really no way that scientists could ever conspire to do anything. And when you look at the composition of the um, study groups that advise the FDA and the people that work at the CDC, they come from all walks of life. The uh, members of the study committees for the FDA, the advisory committees, they come from different institutions in different states. And they don't have any common interest other than to do the right thing scientifically. So the notion that there's some sort of a, a concerted effort to dupe the public or to do something that would be dangerous to the public, if anybody even tried to do that, the whistle would be blown immediately. So anybody that's worked on the inside of academic medicine knows how laughable that is that there could ever be a conspiracy theory. Um, or conspiracy. Uh, some of the other things I've heard, um, just kind of random assertions about the vaccine with nothing to back it up. 
uh, things like, well, will it hurt uh, my ability to have children? Or uh, will it hurt uh, a pregnant woman? Will it hurt her, uh, her fetus? Um, well, I'm not an expert in obstetrics in gynecology or maternal fetal medicine. But one of the things that, that I did learn in school and in my academic career is I know where to find that information out. You, you know where to find the experts. So you can go to the ACOG website, that's the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, and they'll tell you that the um, infection with COVID is far worse for the mother and her baby than is the vaccine. And they recommend that uh, pregnant women or women in general for everybody, <laughs> although they deal with women, gets the vaccine. So again, when you, when you go further up the expertise ladder, you see more and more acceptance of the vaccine. And um, when you go down that ladder into websites of people that are just off the wall, random people that are not connected with any academic center or have any academic credentials, they're the ones that are raising these objections. But these are just some things off the bat that I thought of um, and wanted to share with you. And I would uh, urge you to, uh, to come by and see me if you know where I am and I'm pretty easy to find. Uh, and otherwise just leave some comments and we'll uh, maybe discuss uh, some of those in a, in a future video. Thanks so much.